Hello, and today we're going over a beast of a topic, which is radio frequency microneedling. What is radio frequency microneedling? The fuck I know. Just kidding. It's Morpheus 8 profound Vivace secret. There's a lot of dissenting opinions on this topic. That is how much I freaking love Morpheus, and that was just my first treat. Morpheus 8 um, ruined my skin. So then you think oh, why don't I go on a fact-finding mission on the internet? And you look at these med spa websites and they say things like, the Infini is a cutting edge microneedling device. That's not true. Morpheus 8 is the most powerful device on the market. That's not true. Vivace is the newest technology. That's not true. So please join me for the next seven hours as we go over radio frequency microneedling. We're going to talk about radio frequency, the skin, what you can treat with these devices, the procedure itself, the device basics, how do you know which are good and which are bad, complications you can get. And then we're going to go over the most popular RF devices on the market, which are Vivace, Vivace Ultra, Infinite, Genius, Secret, Potenza Profound, and Morpheus 8. First, what is radio frequency? Radio frequency is a very long wavelength, and we're not going to make this complicated for our purposes. Radio frequency equals heat. Next, how does radio frequency help the skin? And let's go over the skin basics. So this is the skin. We have the epidermis, which makes our pigment. Below that, the dermis, which is the thickest layer. It's where our collagen and elastin live. And then below that, the fat. Our face, on average, is about 1.5 millimeters deep in terms of the dermis. So if you have really deep wrinkles, you have to go down a millimeter and a half. If you're just dealing with pigment, that's really superficial. That's relatively easy to deal with. Our melanocytes live at the very bottom of with epidermis. So again, very superficial. And if we want to build collagen, if we want to help aging skin, we want to help with acne scars or any scars, we want to be in the dermis. The two parts of the skin we care about today, we care about the melanocytes and we care about the dermis. We want to get through the melanocytes, leave them alone and just apply heat or radio frequency to the dermis. How high do we heat it? To 67 degrees, 152 degrees Fahrenheit, while leaving those melanocytes alone. What else do we cook to about 150 degrees? A uh, medium well steak. So we're actually applying quite a bit of heat to the skin. And this is what RF microneedling looks like. We have a device, you have a bunch of little needles going down into the skin. They heat the skin, ideally to 67 degrees. They retract, and then we do that all over the skin. Now, what can RF microneedling treat? And it can treat anything that's in the dermis, basically anything that involves collagen. So things like aging or wrinkles, things like acne scars, cellulite, stretch marks, all of these conditions arise from the collagen in the dermis. Now onto the procedure itself. The procedure largely varies based on which RF device you're getting, but in general, before the procedure, you'll have some type of numbing. It may be a topical cream that you put on, it may be injections, you may take an oral medication, you may get laughing gas, or you may get a device that blows cool air in your face during the procedure. Next, we clean you up very well because we're about to put a million little holes in your skin and we don't want to introduce an infection. This is a look at a typical device, a bunch of little needles come out, they heat the skin, and then they retract. For recovery, you will be red. It could be either just a few hours or it could be up to a couple weeks. After the procedure, the holes in your skin stay open for about 6 to 12 hours, so during this time you have to be very clean. No dogs licking the face, no rolling around in mud, just gentle skincare only. Next, a very brief overview of the basics of a RF microneedling device. First, the choice of needle. Your needle can be uninsulated, meaning that the heat goes all the way up and down the needle, so this will damage the melanocytes. So if you have skin of color, you cannot have an uninsulated needle being used on your skin. Alternatively, you can use an insulated needle, meaning that the majority of the needle is covered with the material and then the heat is only distributed to the very tip of the needle. This is safe for skin of color. Next, the type of energy that can be used. The energy can either be really wide and that's good for just a general tightening or if you have these really precise acne scars, you can use very intense energy that's very small and specific for the area. With radio frequency microneedling and particularly Morpheus 8, there's a lot of haters out there. Morpheus 8 um, ruined my skin. I'm just not a huge fan of Morpheus. Why do I think Morpheus 8 is a terrible procedure to have done? 
And are these reactions warranted? The fact is there are a lot of factors that go into these RF microneedling devices. And what factors, you may ask? Well, first, that we already talked about the needle insulation. Should you use an insulated needle? Should you use an uninsulated needle? Next, needle depth. Should you go more superficial or should you go deeper into the skin? Also, the energy type. Should you use that really intense, precise energy, or should you use the wider general energy? Also, the energy pulse, which is just how long the heat is applied for. It can be as little as 0.1 seconds, or it can be as high as 4 seconds. How long should it be? Also, the skin resistance. Some people just have really dense skin that it's hard to put the needles into, and other people, their skin is not as dense. Another factor, the motor strength. Some of these devices, one in particular, I won't say who because I don't want to get sued, but one of these devices in particular is notoriously underpowered in terms of the motor, and it's just hard for the needles to physically go into the skin. These are all factors that contribute to your outcome and whether it's satisfactory or not. Let's talk about some of the more common complications we see and why they happen. Number one, grid marks that remain for months after the procedure. Why does this happen? This happens because of our good friend, the melanocytes, which are at the bottom of the epidermis. They can be damaged in this process, either by the needles being too high or the skin is just really resistant and the needles aren't able to get down as far as they need to be, or the motor is really underpowered and it couldn't get the needles to the depth where they needed to be in the skin. The other complication, fat loss. This is from needles being too deep in the skin and they're melting away the fat in instead of treating the dermis. Or the skin is just very, very thin and you think you're in the dermis, but in reality, you're down in the fat. These all combine to unsatisfactory outcomes for the patient. So now that we are scared straight about using these devices, let's talk about these specific devices in particular. First, Vivace. Vivace was launched in 2016 and it has two different lights. The red is for anti-aging and the blue is to kill bacteria, which is good for acne. This is the device going into the skin. It goes in, it heats, it pulls out. This is the Vivace in action. You can see this is the red anti-aging light and the needles are going into the skin and then retracting out. There's one very important part of this video that's very small and it's this frame here. As you can see, there's a little needle that's sticking out so we know the needles are not going all the way into the skin. And this is not specific to Vivace. This can happen in any of these devices. But when we have the needles going in on an angle, then it can damage the melanocytes and we can get that hyperpigmentation after. So this is another thing that can yet go wrong just through the anatomy of the face. Next, Vivace Ultra, which was launched in 2013. Now this is Vivace turned up a notch because it added ultrasound to this device. That's what the ultra stands for. So rather than kind of guessing where you are in the skin, you may be in the dermis, you may be in the fat, this has an ultrasound device connected to it so you know exactly where you are. This is a wonderful addition. And next, Infini. The Infini is an older device. It was launched in 2013. Look at how hard the provider is pressing into the skin. It's like they're really trying to get the needles into the skin. This is a result of the Infini being a little bit older in technology. The Infini can also be quite painful, especially at the higher level of energy. And it also, it sounds like a stapler when it's going in. That's what she said. Next, Genius. The Genius is the newer version of the Infini. It's made by the same company. And the Genius is unique because the needles enter at three different levels. So you're getting more of a 3D effect when you're using the device. And the Genius is unique because it delivers the perfect amount of energy. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's the exact energy your body needs. So you are not going to be over or under treated with this device. This is the genius in action. And notice how easily the needles go into the skin. Compare that to the Infini that we just saw where the practitioner was really pushing into the skin. This goes in nice and easily. The genius also has a very high power motor. So that's why this practitioner is able to do this so easily. Next, secret. Secret was launched in 2018 and it has two sets of needles. You can choose insulated needles or uninsulated needles. It also uses that very precise form of heat. So this device in particular, we love for skin of color because if you use both the insulated needle plus that very precise energy, the melanocytes are going to be left alone, very safe. You won't get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation with Secret. Now let's see the animation of Secret. This is using uninsulated needles. And next, let's look at the actual device itself. We can see 
needles easily going into the skin. This is a simple device, but it does its job well. And now things are going to start getting complicated. So let's talk Potenza. Potenza was launched in 2020, and I always think Potenza has a bonanza of needle tips. Potenza has a lot of really innovative needles that I've not seen before. A couple of them are the tiger tip. As you can see, it has that intermittent insulation on the needle. So with just one needle pass, you can treat a couple of different areas in the skin. That's unique. Nobody else does that. And also this fusion tip, you go down with the needle and it releases a burst of air. So it can go even deeper into the dermis. This is really unique. No other device has this. And you can see in this animation, it's kind of sucking up the skin and releasing the heat. And here's the Potenza in action. Not much to see, except that it's a really clean device. It doesn't look like the practitioner is struggling to get the needles in. Again, these newer devices are a little bit better at the motor power. And next, Profound. Profound was launched in 2015, and it's often used to treat the lower face, mostly the jowl area. And this device is very unique because as you can see here, the needles go in at an angle and the needle depth is up to six millimeters. So that's really deep into the skin. And the heating time is the longest, up to four seconds. So that's a really long time to heat the skin, meaning it works well, but it's painful and the device is measuring the skin to make sure it's at the exact correct temperature. And you can see here the profound in action. I think you can appreciate how long the needles are in the skin. Remember, this can go up to four seconds in the skin. And here you can see the needles. They're, they're quite long and they enter at an angle. Because of the depth of the needle and entering at an angle, the profound can cause bruising on the face, which may take a week or two to recover from. And next, Kim K's favorite. She's the belle of the ball today, Morpheus 8. Morpheus 8 was launched in 2020, and it comes with quite a few needle tips. I chose to include just one here to make it simple. This can enter the skin, and as it retracts, it pulses three times to create that 3D effect. Morpheus 8 can go up to 8 millimeters into the body, so that's the deepest we can go with a RF microneedling device. The 8 millimeter setting is meant to be used on the body, and it's meant to melt fat. It's called Morpheus because it's morphing the body. I didn't put that together until I read it just recently. And here's a cartoon of the device. In this cartoon, they're melting the fat away so it enters, it can melt the fat easily. So it's almost kind of like a liposuction device in that way. And here's the device in action. You can see the needles easily going into the skin. Like we said, there's a few different needle tips for Morpheus 8, ones that are meant for the face, ones that are meant for the body. And that concludes our whirlwind overview of radiofrequency microneedling devices.